Hey all, I wanted to do this little bit of a different video to show you um, how to use a calculator. And I'm a, I know that might sound weird, but more and more I find that there's always a subset of students who enter in AP Physics 1 where their math teacher, very common, that the math teacher really doesn't want you to use it, rely on a calculator too much. And so you, you're very good at doing mental math, maybe you're good at doing manipulation, but actually using a calculator is not a skill that you kind of picked up. And it is actually a really important skill, especially in physics, when you are doing things. So I, I kind of wanted to just show you a few tips and tricks and just some basic calculation stuff when you're dealing uh, with using a calculator. So the first thing that's kind of a very common mistake that uh, a lot of students get is just, let's say you're doing with a fraction. Let's say I'm doing like 10 divided by three pi, for example. Okay, and, and this is such a common mistake that I say, I just wanna get very clear. Your calculator, when it does division, it always goes left to right. So you cannot do something like 10 divided by three times second pi. You, you, this is not, this here is not gonna give you what you want. Okay, what it's gonna give you instead is what this did was 10 divided by three times pi. Implicitly, what it did is it's 10 divided by three then times pi would give you 10.471975. Uh, and if you hit enter, for example, then um, that, that, that's what would happen. What you, instead, what you wanted is you really wanted the three and the pi to go together. And so on your calculator, what you have to do is you have to put parentheses around it, like 10 divided by three times pi, okay? And that is the correct answer, 1.06. That is what 10 over three pi should be, 1.061, like that. So make sure you do, just remember your calculator does left to right. If you really wanna be fast and not deal with parentheses, okay? you can do divided by pi instead. So you're kind of telling it like divided by three and then divided by pi. That's the same thing. If I do 10 divided by three then over pi, that is the same as doing 10 thirds times one over pi, right? And so that will also give you the same answer, for example, there, okay? Um, the other thing is, is really about, yeah, order of operations is like really, really kind of um, key and something uh, I really want you guys to like really pay attention to when you're doing it. The other thing is, is let's say, let's say I had this, uh, let's say I, I had this entered in already, okay? And that's something you can do. You can always scroll up on your TI and go pick something else that you had entered in previously and put down here. But let's say I made a mistake. Now, let's say I'm like, oh, I wanna put parentheses in there. Well, if you put a parentheses right there, it overwrites it. So rather than starting over, um, what you're supposed to do is you do second, you see this insert button right here, second insert, and then anything you put in will, will then will, will, will work properly. Okay, so by default, it kind of erases the letter. Like, this is very old school. I don't know why they still have it this way, other than they haven't just don't want to change the programming. But this, the insert button here is really useful if you want to modify something you, you already entered into your calculator. And that can save you time, especially when you're entering in something very, very, very long. Okay. The other thing I want to show you is um, some other things that are nice, nice trick is let's say I wanted to take this number and manipulate this number. Let's say I wanted to do um, 10 divided by three pi and then I wanted to take the square root of that, okay? Now what you can do is you can do square root. There's two ways to do this. You can do square root and you see this answer button? This answer button is sort of a placeholder for like kind of the previous result. In this case, it would do the square root of this number okay, which would give you 1.03, which is the squared, or you could do square root, and then you could go up here and then hit enter to insert that number where your cursor is, and then that gives you the same thing. Also, there's two ways to sort of use a previous result into your calculation, which I really suggest you do because you don't wanna be rounding early in your calculations. You wanna round at the very end, which means you wanna use the full numbers if you're doing the calculations step by step, okay? The last thing I want to talk about is uh, tricks on scientific notation. So let's say I'm trying to do the square root of say 10 times, oh, not, let's not do 10, let's do uh, five times 10 to the third divided by two times 10 um, to the fourth. And I would like to cube this guy or something like that. Actually, let's just get rid of the square. Root. Let's say I'm just doing this, okay? Uh, let's square this guy here, okay? Now, you can t 
type all of this stuff out. Let me give you a shape. I could do five times 10 to the third, and then I could divide, and remember our trick, I gotta put parentheses here, two times 10 to the fourth, and then I square that thing. You could do that, all right? That's one way to kind of get an answer at there. But your calculator, because scientific notation is very common, your calculator has tricks to sort of do that a little bit faster. This EE button, for example, like instead of five times 10 to the third, you can write that as five EE three. And same with the two times 10 to the fourth, you can write that as two EE four. And so how you would enter in your calculator is you'd five EE three, and then it'll just show you one E when you're doing it, but it's the EE button here. And then divided by, here's the cool thing, you it always does the EE first. So you don't have to put parentheses because it knows that like this belongs together. And also if you square it like this, it knows not to square the four, but it knows to square the whole thing together like this. Like it implicitly knows it. So you don't have to put as many parentheses when you're using the EE button. It's optional. You can get, get away with not doing it. It's just like usually with these, you have to be very careful with your parentheses. Okay, and see I get the exact same number, just with a lot fewer sort of button presses, if you will. And, and when there's fewer button presses, it minimizes your chance of mistake. It's also easier to read what you're doing once you get comfortable with it. And so that's what this notation here is. My answer here is 1.25 times 10 to the negative five. So you'll kind of see that here um, as a result, it like kind of shows up. The E stands for exponent. It's exponent base 10, basically. Okay, and then last, just making sure you do order of operations correctly. Your calculator is really dumb. Okay, so first off, there's a separate ne negative sign button here versus minus. Like for example, if I try to do minus three here, you see, this is doing answer minus three. That's not what I want. Let's say I want negative three, then I have to use this negative sign button. If you just like tried to do um, a minus without anything, like a minus three, it's gonna tell you there's a syntax error because it does not understand the minus sign without like two numbers. It, like subtraction and the negative sign are different things on your calculator. Again, pretty antiquated because this TI-84 has been around for like 40 years, so like at least. So um, they haven't changed the programming. So in the old days, like the, the negative sign was different operator than the minus sign. And so that's why this one exists. So if you have negative three and you square it, for example, notice that you get negative nine, but that is not negative three times negative three, which would be negative three squared. So like squaring negative numbers is just one specific thing that's kind of weird. Um, when, you're, when you're squaring a negative number, this should be positive nine. And that's because your calculator is doing the exponent first and then applying the negative operator. So you gotta put parentheses when you wanna square a negative number. And so that's uh, how I would get the correct answer there. Um, so when you're squaring negative numbers, make sure you put parentheses because your calculator doesn't know the difference. Those are kind of the main things at the top of my head. Also, just make sure in physics, we usually in degree mode when you're doing sine and cosine. So make sure you're in degree mode. For those of you who take pre-calculus and physics at the same time, or calculus and physics at the same time, you'll find that in pre-calculus, we spend more of our time with the radian function if you're using the calculator. Um, but um, in physics, we almost always use the degree mode. There's a few cases you might use radian, but for the most part, we use degrees when we're doing stuff in physics. Okay, so I hope that I hope you found that helpful. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over that. I think it was really needed for a lot of your students who are starting out in physics this year, just making sure you kind of like really understand the calculator operations. If you have any questions, just um, let me know uh, in the comment or in Discord or uh, however um, you're like, in the, you know, you wanna reach out to me. If you have any questions, let me know, all right?